Hello, my name is Jared Mayo. I'm a business development manager at Buki, and we are back today for the third installment of Supercritical Chats. If this is your first time listening, this series is a technical talk uh, aimed at demystifying SFC and provide education on the impacts and unique differences of SFC compared to other forms of chromatography. I personally have a background in medicinal chemistry, so I'm very excited for today's uh, topic, which is chiral separations using SFC. And joining us again is Madison Hogan, uh, our chromatography specialist. Uh, and she's going to help explain uh, chiral separations, its workflow, and uh, walk, some walk through some common applications as well. Thanks, Jared. Um, it's really nice to be back for another episode. I'm really looking forward to discussing chiral separations on the SFC. I think this is where the SFC really shines, so there's a lot to talk about today. Um, I really hope everyone finds this discussion informative um, and comes away with a better understanding of the various applications of SFC, um, as well as its unique differences and advantages over your typical HPLC applications. Um, this is also for you guys to decide if SFC is going to be a good fit for your own lab space. So I know you've already had discussions with Stephen and Michael in the past installments discussing the technology behind the SFC, uh, the environmental and economic impacts of the technology. And by the way, those discussions will be linked here in case you missed them. Uh, but please refresh our memory on the important points before we dive into chiral separations. Yeah, no problem. Um, there are just a few key points to keep in mind as we kind of go into our discussion today. First is that SFC is utilizing supercritical fluid as one of the solvents. And the properties of supercritical fluids are really interesting, but essentially it allows us to have faster separations um, and also really, really great solubility. We're using uh, supercritical CO2 in this instance. It's the most common supercritical solvent uh, used in SFC. Um, and, you know, CO2 is going to be much, much more environmentally friendly and cost effective when compared to your typical organic solvents used for LC purification. Great. So let's dive in. So let's transition to chiral separation. So uh, before we jump into it, Maddie, would you be able to just help define chiral mo molecules for everyone? Yeah, um, so chiral molecules are really interesting because two molecules can actually have the same chemical formula, but based on how the atoms are oriented in the structure, they have different properties and actually act differently. Um, think of your hands. Each hand has five fingers, um, and if you put your hands together, they are mirror images. Um, but you cannot superimpose your hands on top of each other. Your left hand is innately different than your right hand. Um, and this is the same idea as uh, the difference in different chiral molecules. So since chiral molecules behave differently, I would expect that that would have a big impact uh, when it comes to its end use, correct? Yes, definitely. So most drugs these days are actually chiral molecules. Um, all orientations, um, we call them enantiomers, uh, must be isolated and tested per FDA drug regulations. Um, some older drugs have actually been taken off the market because it was found that some of those chiral orientations produce some pretty negative side effects. Um, one example of a chiral drug right now is ketoprofen. Uh, ketoprofen is a very common anti-inflammatory. Um, its mechanism of action is the inhibition of the product production of prostaglandin. It's also racemic. The S antimer of ketoprofen, also known as dexketoprofen, exhibits 160 times more potency when talking about bi bioavailability than the R antimer. Wow. So I, I know we're seeing that mixtures can complicate the process for getting drugs approved. How are these compounds traditionally separated then uh, when there's really just one specific enantiomer of interest? So in the past, uh, traditionally, chiral separations have been done via normal phase prep HPLC chromatography. However, running normal phase prep HPLC sometimes leads to some issues with the volatility of the organic solvents, um, as well as 
poor UV baselines, the solvents can sometimes interfere with the UV. Um, so this is where SFC comes in and really shines. Um, you know, as I mentioned a few episodes back with Stephen, uh, supercritical CO2 is actually considered a normal phase solvent. So it is still compatible with all your normal phase chiral columns, um, but the resolution is actually quite a bit better. So you mentioned chiral columns. W would you be able to explain why the stationary phases uh, used in chiral columns are more effective at separating these racemic mixtures? Yeah, definitely. So chiral columns are super interesting. There is a lot more chemistry going on in the chiral column media um, than, say, your typical bare silica or even your functionalized silica with C18, which are what we're most common with. Um, you know, in your chiral columns, you still have your silica backbone, um, but then that is either coated or bonded with a polysaccharide, um, either amylose or cellulose. And then on that sugar, polysaccharide is actually a chiral identifier attached to it. And the chiral identifier provides a three point interaction to help separate those different enantiomers based on their structure, not necessarily their weight or their polarity. Okay. So now we know about the stationary phases, but how would I choose the best uh, column based off my chemistry? Can you talk about how method development on the SFC would compare to method development on, let's say, like a normal phase preparative HPLC? Right. So one thing that stays the same between the two of them is that you have to screen a lot of different stationary phases to find the best one. Um, I think the best way to illustrate this is actually in terms of the example I referenced earlier, ketoprofen. Um, our expert colleague, Ron Magbu, actually helped us out by scanning racemic ketoprofen with 12 columns on the HPLC and 16 columns on the SFC. The LC was run with the same mobile phase gradient um, and one stationary phase proved to be the best. That was amylose one. Uh, the SFC scouting was similar. All 16 columns were run under the same conditions and it showed that the IG column was best. Okay, so how, how transferable um, are these methods from normal phase prep of HPLC to SFC then? So there's not a whole lot of transfer between normal phase prep LC to um, SFC. You know, we're talking about changing the mobile phase. And when we change the mobile phase, we change the chemistry. So elution order is going to change. Retention time is going to change. Um, and because we're talking about these solvents with different polarity, you know, the stationary phase, if it's really great on normal phase, it might not be good on SFC. As you can see from our example, normal phase had the amylose one as the best option and SFC had the IG as the best option. Okay, so it, it seems like there's a lot of different columns potentially used for chiral separations, right? Uh, on a standard analytical instrument that we all have a lot of um, experience with, I know this would take quite a lot of time and work to, to accomplish. Um, what does that look like if I had a whole library of compounds that I needed to develop methods for on, let's say, like the SFC? Yeah, so like you said, we don't have all day to run 16 different methods one at a time for every single compound we have to scale up to prep. Um, that's why, you know, here at Buki, we actually have a special dedicated instrument for method development. Um, it's called the Setmatics, and essentially it's a parallel uh, screening system. So you can run eight columns in parallel um, with different mobile phases. And in the span of about an hour, you're going to get 80 different chromatograms. So you mm -hmm. have essentially 80 options to choose from uh, for the best separation. So it really accelerates that method development. Wow. So, all right. So now we have our method. Uh, next step is to purify at scale. Uh, how does the SFC differ from preparative HPLC uh, when it comes to running a bulk chiral separation? Right. So I'm going to keep using our ketoprofen example. Um, like you said, we've established a method. Um, 
But now we need to talk about throughput when it comes to bulk separation. And one big factor in throughput is the amount that you can load onto the column per run. Um, so in order to maintain a good separation on the normal phase prep HPLC, we were only able to load about 1.2 milligrams of ketoprofen per run, uh, whereas on the SFC, we were able to load up to 5 milligrams per run. Now keep in mind, we use the same size columns on both the normal phase prep HPLC and the SFC. Um, now. The difference there is that on the normal phase prep HPLC, we have our normal organic solvents, and on the SFC, we're using supercritical CO2. So on the SFC, our flow rate is actually three times faster. We expedited the process by doing stacked injections, which is the process where one run is ending, and before it completely ends, we're already injecting another um, sample into the column. Um, just to kind of speed things up. And that does make things a little bit more efficient, but you also can't change the retention time. The retention time on the HPLC, um, the peak started looting, eluding at about five minutes, whereas on the SFC, they started eluding at three minutes. Now, all of these differences put together in terms of, you know, total processing time, um, you know, it makes a big difference. Uh, for purifying one gram of racemic ketoprofen, it was going to take 111 hours on the normal phase prep HPLC, whereas on the SFC, it was only going to take 17 hours to purify the same amount. Wow, that's that's really impressive. So really, we're looking at processing the same amount of material on the SFC in about, what, a fifth of the time as it would take on a standard preparative HPLC. Um, sounds like this would be a really valuable tool um, and would deliver a huge impact to let's say like a pharmaceutical company uh, looking to isolate large batches of chiral targets. Uh, and I know presently SFC is considered the gold standard for a lot of pharmaceutical and, and uh, med chem applications, but who else is using SFC? Yeah, there are a few, um, you know, industries out there that are already using SFC and also getting into SFC. Um, one of them being agrochem, you know, pesticide man manufacturers. There's a lot of emerging governmental regulations coming out uh, regarding the chiral purity of pesticides um, and how it has to do with, you know, uh, their toxicity. The other uh, industry is flavor and fragrance. So you know, a lot of different flavor and fragrance compounds are chiral, surprisingly. And each different enantiomer actually has a slightly different um, taste or smell. So it's really important to isolate them. Uh, limonene, for example, from citrus actually has, you know, a D isomer and an L isomer, and they both have very different flavor profiles. Um, and the other one that comes to mind is cosmetics. You know, cosmetics, uh, you know, huge industry, they utilize a lot of uh, synthetically manufactured amino acids, vitamin E, glucosamine, fructan. They all have specific active uh, enantiomers. So it's important to isolate those to have the best dermal absorption rates in your lotions, your serums, your rubs, your scrubs. <laughs> Thanks, Maddie. So it, it sounds like there's a lot of workflows uh, that, that could use SFC then. Um, let's say I'm a lab manager or a purification scientist. What sort of pain points would indicate that I should consider or investigate SFC for my lab or organization? Yeah, that's a great question. I think um, it's really important to keep three factors in mind. Uh, one is solvent cost. How much am I spending on solvent right now? Uh, two is your has waste costs. You know, after you use the solvent, you still got to pay to get rid of it. Um, and that can get really expensive using some of those halogenated organic solvents. Um, and the third is what does my throughput look like? And do I need it faster? Do I need to be able to process more sample? Um, and if you looked at those three components uh, and you answered, yes, I have high costs, to both buy the solvent and remove it, and yes, I want uh, more throughput, then I think SFC is worth looking into. 
Well, great. So if someone was interested in learning more or having a discussion about SOC, could they reach out to you? Absolutely. Um, like we mentioned in past episodes with my other colleagues, um, we are always available to talk about, you know, your specific application. You know, at Buki, we really want to make sure that the instrument you get is the right fit for what you need to do. Well, it was great talking with you today, Maddie. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. It's my pleasure, Jared. And for all of our listeners, uh, make sure you stay tuned uh, for future episodes where we continue to dive into method development. Uh, next time it'll be for achiral separations on the SFC. And there might even be a bonus episode for a live SFC demonstration. So stay tuned. You have a great day, Jared. Yeah, thank you. Bye.